Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a senior designer at DPA in Clifton in Oxfordshire in England. I got into lighting because I studied architecture but didn't want to be an architect. So then I found out I could be a lighting designer and um, worked on it from there. So at DPA we work on a lot of hospitality, which is great because it's really varied from sort of huge luxury resorts right down to quite casual uh, restaurants and bars. Uh, so it's really fun, we work with really great teams. We also do residential and that's probably some of my favourite work because I really like working with um, end clients and working with you know, shaping people's houses and shaping their spaces and uh, influencing you know, how that space is going to work. Uh, I think we take things that we experience subconsciously and then we sort of enhance, you know, use those things to enhance how we experience a space and I think a lot of the things that we notice and that we do I don't think necessarily everyone consciously notices but I think it all comes together and really you know makes the most of a space to put it really simply. So in some ways it goes against what I why I love what I do uh, it, you know, working with light as a, as a medium to design with, especially things when it comes to sort of tracking people in shops and um, using lights for that, it just feels a bit big brother um, in some ways. But on the other hand, as a lot of the sort of home technology um, control stuff is becoming more popular, a lot of my friends have asked me for lighting design. And so I, I do wonder if it will actually make it more accessible and um, in some ways sort of promote what we do and the importance of, of lighting. So there's, I think, a good side and a bad side to it. I would probably continue my research on lighting in hospitals that I started when I did my Masters in Lighting. Um, I would, I'd love to sort of look at what's done internationally in hospitals and what is successful and what isn't and really examine the, um, the regulations and the recommendations for hospital lighting here, how successful they are and what we can do that would make it even better. I'm probably most proud of um, our work that we did on the Radcliffe camera in Oxford and that was part of the Night of Heritage Light with um, the Society of Light and Lighting. And that project, be partly because it was one that we all worked together uh, as a team in the company, it's not something we get to do all that often and it was just really great to all be working together on something. But also the way that that project really sort of brought together the community and so many people in Oxford absolutely loved it and it really brought to life a, a really beautiful building. Um, another one would be Greenwich Market that I worked on when I was at Hawley and I mean it was just down the road from me uh, again such a beautiful heritage building and it just really again brought it to life and yeah great project, project great team. One would be graduating into a recession, which found it very hard to find a job. Um, but aside from that, it's probably my own confidence and main lack of. Um, it's something that I've had to work really hard for and I have been helped with along the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, sort of just having confidence in my own ability and um, confidence to speak up with my opinions. It's something that's taken a lot of work. I have been really fortunate in that there have been many people, uh, especially within the lighting industry, who have given me advice and support uh, at various stages. Uh, one that springs to mind is Jonathan Rush, who I worked with at Hawley, and he sort of challenged me and sort of encouraged me um, and sort of taught, taught me a lot. He would put me forward for things such as um, hosting the Hawley table at the Women in Architecture Awards and I mean he'd sometimes throw me in the deep end but it, it usually worked out well. 
I think as uh, technology progresses and all these sort of things, are, all these different functions of light are, are promised to us, I appreciate more and more sort of just incidents of light and especially natural light. Uh, last year I saw the midnight sun off the coast of Norway and just sort of our relationship with light and you know how we feel and respond to light at various times of day it yeah it constantly inspires me and fascinates me I think the the lack of women at conferences and things like that is partly down to a lack of examples so it's almost like some women have to go first and, and be there. But I think especially with keynote speakers is a huge thing. If you've got a whole host of keynote speakers and then a, a call for papers, if all those keynote speakers are male, then it doesn't really, I don't think it really attracts women. I think that is something that is transitioning in the industry. Uh, a few days ago, there was the um, PLDC challenge finalists announced and I think there's six of them and they're all female and it's just something I've, I've never seen before. It's it, yeah, a really great thing to see. Society is gradually changing in terms of men and women sort of challenging the traditional uh, gender roles, especially within families. And I think if flexible working hours allows men to work flexibly as well as women, allows them to you know, pay a bigger part in families and allows this to be more of a partnership and doesn't put so much of an onus on women having to you know, take huge breaks in their work or work you know, really rigid, rigid uh, part-time hours. And the problem with lighting design is that there's so many small companies and a lot of them, I think, think it's that they can't offer flexible yeah. working. But actually, I think if, if more companies realise that they can get more out of their staff with yeah. flexible working, um, I think it can only help a quality in the industry. I think if we boost each other, we can all do better. <laughs>